Hey, what's good everybody? Welcome to episode 1.2 of my Bitwig review slash tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at audio. I've done this video about five times just because every time I go over things I learn something a little bit more and a little bit more. So if for whatever reason I miss something or I'm incorrect, then again as always I'd appreciate you just throwing that off in the comments and hopefully raising the overall collective conscience of the thing about Bitwig. Because again, I don't know everything, even though I'm pretty well versed in the program so far. So with that being said, if you haven't seen the first video, then I'd invite you to go check that out first. So that way you'll know how to navigate through the program and you won't get kind of stuck on like trying to follow along within this video. But yeah. Here we go. Bitwig is very particular with audio uh, compared to Ableton, and it can be a good thing to you or it can be a bad thing to you. And for me, I kind of find myself on the in-between, and I'll show you why. So the first thing that I want to bring to attention is that my host BPM is at 85, and if I drag in a clip that's at 128 or any different tempo, you'll see that it automatically warps it in time, which is kind of cool. And that, it, at least as far as like transient preservation and not having to warp things, I think that's an interesting feature to say the least that I don't have to necessarily worry about. Within that though, the problem is that if I play this, this doesn't really work that well if you have a faster BPM going into a slower BPM. Like this is a typical thing that you'll find within any synth or DAW that it will kind of slow down. We will talk about the warp modes and some potential ways to fix that in the future or in just a little bit. But for now, I want to talk about just the overall editing process of how to kind of navigate and go about this stuff. So just like Ableton, you kind of have your same functions of like command E to slice. So you just hit there, hit there hit there. You've got your command D to duplicate. You can cut with all of your keyboard shortcuts. You can do that stuff. But you'll notice that if you change the bar, then it's only going to lengthen the clip as opposed to do time stretching. If you hit right click, then you can actually scale at 50% or double percent or I guess 200%. I'll go here and then half it and then I can go and undo that. But the other thing to keep in mind is that there are no shortcuts for that or you can't kind of do it individually. You can't kind of like stretch it to here and then Kind of fix it that way. Now you can do that in other ways, which we'll talk about when we get to the editor panel. But for me, what I've done is I have mapped the open and close bracket to here. So that way, if I want to just do like a quick stretch, then I can just hit either the close bracket to double it or the open bracket to make it in half. And that works out pretty well most of the time. So within that, I can also hit R and that will reverse it. You also have this thing right here to where you can kind of do like a quick button press of doing the same functions. Kind of like what I talked about in the last video, if we go into that clip kind of panel right there, then you can sticky any of these functions that you like. So slice in place, you can do the slice to drum machine or slice to multi-sample, reset, fades, auto fades, all that stuff. But for me, I find that this is pretty much the only one that I need. If I hit control and then I also hit shift, then I can also do scrubbing through the clip on here. You can also do that within the editor panel, but it's nice that it kind of snaps. There's currently no way to do this without it snapping as far as I know, unless if you go into the editor view, but it generally works out pretty okay. If you kind of click right here, then you can see that you can add in fades. You'll notice that this snaps. If I hold shift, then you can kind of do it freely. You can't customize the curves on the fades other than the options that you have right here, but it's not quite the same as the kind of fade editing that you can do within Ableton, but at least it's there, right? So one other thing is if you're used to pushing zero to deactivate the clip, nothing happens. So you'll have to right click and go to muted. What I've done is I've set a keyboard shortcut to option and A, and that will deactivate the clip. You can also click over here to deactivate as well. Again, I'm all about keyboard shortcuts as far as workflow goes. So the more that you can kind of train yourself to use different keyboard shortcuts, the better it's going to kind of leave you to be. The next thing that we'll kind of get into is some of the warp modes within all of this. And I'm not going to cover them all, but I'm going to kind of cover some of the general features that you have. And I'm going to talk about the biggest problem within this first, just to kind of get it out of the way. And if Bitwig is watching this, please, please fix this. There is a workaround. It's just really annoying. So if I set my warp mode to raw, then you'll see that this is the original tempo that it's playing at. For some reason, you can't transposition this. You'll see that the tempo is unavoidable or that you can't change the tempo and that you also cannot change the pitch. You can drag the value, but nothing will happen. So what you have to do is set this to repitch, but for some reason, you can't change the pitch of repitch. It won't kind of work with you. So what you have to do is change the tempo 
if you want this to kind of stretch in the way that you want it to or not. And it kind of does you a couple of favors because if you want everything to kind of stay in time, it's already warped. So the only thing that you have to do is to kind of either drag this along to make it fit in such a way, or you can always just do math as well if that's something that you're really good at, which to me, I'm not fantastic at, but. That's something that you can do as well. Other than that though, the general fix that I would try to do with this is if you have a kind of beat that you want to preserve the transients of and make it still sound as clean as possible, then my advice would be to go into slice mode and change the tail to off, keep this at onsets and see if how far you can get with this one. It's not perfect, but that's probably the best way that I can think of, of trying to keep everything within time on that. So since we're in slice mode, we'll kind of take a look at some of these features. Almost all of the warp modes have kind of like a beats mode device, not all of them, but you can kind of kind of do that kind of warping if that's what you like. And then if you're warping within something that has a format option, then this can kind of change obviously like the format, which to me reminds me of the complex pro features. We also have stretch. I'm just going to go to stretch HD because why wouldn't you? That's pretty much what you would want to use. It does take a little bit more CPU, but that's fine. And on here, what you have instead are grain sizes. So if we listen to this at the onsets, you'll see that this is just going to take a very short transient. But what we have to do to activate it is to turn this on. The middle one has a little bit longer transient. And then of course this big one is a bigger transient. So that's, you know, just something to consider. And then of course with the onsets we can, or we can try a one eighth. Not too bad. It's not perfect, but again, it works. You can turn the transients off or this takes the before and after, and this just takes everything after the transient but that's kind of up to you of how you want to cut that cookie. So cyclic mode is pretty much the texture mode. But it's kind of cool because you don't have to stretch this out in order to make it sound like that. If we turn the format on, this is pretty noticeable. You'll see that it will give you those formats. Which is kind of cool because if you automate this, it kind of gives you that flange feeling. So as far as like creatively, this is a really cool thing to do. Of course, if like you're trying to make these your main drums, then my advice would be to just slice it on your own and then turn the warp mode off. That would probably be the easiest way to go about that. But it's still nice to have some cool creative options to manipulate this, if that makes sense. So next we have the Elastic. I'm just going to go to the Elastic Pro because this is, sorry, the Elastic Pro because this is pretty much what we're going to want to look at in the first place. And let's just go ahead and listen to this. It says right here that on the smaller values, it's better for high pitch sounds and larger values for low pitch sounds, but this has kind of a collection. So the only thing that we're going to be able to do really is to just kind of explore and see what happens. Okay. Well, what happens if I turn this down? Not a whole lot. So maybe if we change the format of this, then we change the resolution, we'll get a bigger difference. So again, it's also kind of like that complex pro. So there's kind of some weird things to kind of get lost in within this. The elastic versions of these are all kind of the same thing, but just not with as many features. And if you kind of want to read more into it, we have the foreign preserving stretching, transient preserving stretching, smooth spectral stretching, and then transient preserving stretching with format control. So yeah, they're very different than how they behave as compared to Ableton, but it's not to say that there's not some interesting functions in this that you can get lost in. And it's nice that there's some kind of like shortcuts right here that you can mess with to kind of change everything up and move around. So in this function here, you also see that we have the shuffle and it doesn't make that big of a difference unless if you have some warping going on in the first place. But to me, as far as I know, I can't really tell a difference. We can go ahead and try it. Yeah, so it doesn't really change a whole lot. So you have to go in here on its own and edit that kind of function, but it's cool that it at least has the option once you start to add some stuff to it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the 
editor function and this is kind of similar to how you would do modulation and stuff within the clips on their own right but you'll see that we have a lot of different things that we can choose from on here within the clips you'll see that it has the green highlighted and on here we have the audio events to me this is probably where most of the magic happens but you also have different things where you can manipulate the stretch and the onsets as well so within the clip region it's basically meant for standard editing which is more so like copy paste if I highlight a section, I can push Command D. I can also Command X if I want to take something out, and you'll see that it goes within that. So if we go into the audio events, there's a lot more that we can do. You'll notice that there's a gray bar right here that we can kind of work with. And if I hit Command E, then we can switch that up and change this around. We can also lengthen the rest of the clip within here. And basically, it's like just a really cool way to really mix up your groove. And to me, like this is one of the coolest things that we can do because there's a lot of different options on how to, you know, essentially remix and slice and splice or chop it up if that's what you like doing of different grooves and, and different clips that you can manipulate. Yeah, this is like one of the coolest things about Bitwig's audio functionality, in my opinion, because there's just so much that you can do. So within this, typically you would do, you know, different cutting and stuff, but we can also separate the audio events here and I can go right click and change this to a different quantization. And because this is cut, this also makes it unique. And so what that basically means is I can change this to this into a different warp mode. And you can still do that on the timeline here, but this is just a faster way of kind of allowing yourself to do that. So I can go in like this, I'm gonna to go to quantize, we're gonna change that to here, I'm gonna give it a huge shuffle. Let's give it a huge shuffle all the way through. You'll see that it kind of shifted everything over a bit. Then I can change this into something cyclic and if I want to stretch it, you'll see that there's this little arrow right here and I can stretch that out this way. So you'll have to be mindful because if you want to stretch the entire thing, you can do it on this. But if you want to stretch something within a transient, you have to click on here and then click in between. And then once we do that, then double click, double click, you'll see that I can kind of push the transient in and out. And it's kind of weird how that operates, how it kind of stretches in between that. But I can also double click off of that and then take this one instead and move this. Sorry, it's a little bit wonky of how that works. You have to double click on it and then move around it because once you take it off, then it kind of gets funky. But just kind of look for the icon where it has both directions on doing stretching and warping but that's kind of how you would change the transient behavior of that, which is really strange, but kind of cool at the same time. It's just very different to me. I'm not used to it at all. You can also change the onsets of like where a transient is, but you'll notice that it won't move the audio part. So just be mindful of that. And this would be for like, if you're trying to set it up to some kind of beats mode or something. Within the pitch, that's kind of your standard thing where you can do automation on all that stuff. You can see that it will move X, Y, Z. Within the foreman, if you have a stretch mode that supports formants then you can also do the modulation within that this is just volume so that's kind of standard now one thing that you'll notice is if you highlight both of these and you go into this mode right here which is multi-layering mode sorry when you highlight both of these then you'll see that you can kind of bounce back and forth between editing and kind of do different mixing and matching which is actually pretty phenomenal. So if you want to kind of create a complex groove or you want to do something that's kind of like comp editing, I believe that would be the way to do it. So if we create a third track right here, then you can kind of start to do some really neat functionalities with this of just like creating a complex groove. And then again, you can hit that Alt A, drag that piece there. So maybe you just want that, you can take that out. And if you like doing bass lines this way, where you have that kind of audio, like chop functionality of the sort, then it's a really cool way to kind of do editing in that. So this function can also be done in MIDI as well, but you'll see that whenever you click on this, if you have something else that is between MIDI and audio, when I click on this and I command all of these, you'll see that this little icon comes up to where you can have, where you have to alternate between the two. So this is really cool that because for one, you can do like your comp editing, like I said before, but the other thing is that if you're trying to go and edit all of these in between, then it's all just kind of right there and it makes it a little bit easier to work with in some cases. It, it depends, you know, it's definitely a workflow type of thing. You can set this to scroll if you want to, but this will fit it if you like. And then we can also set this to be adaptive 
and go into different grid modes and of course you know that same kind of panel view i actually really like that this is an option here within this view as well so that's pretty much an overall view of how to get into audio editing again the stretch functions aren't necessarily perfect but the type of editing that you can do within all of this is pretty interesting and pretty pretty powerful if you think about it and again it's a slightly different way of how you'd go about and Ableton, but at the same time, it's still, <clears throat> excuse me, it's still pretty powerful in its own right, even if it is different. So I hope that was helpful to you all. If you have any questions, then just give me a shout and I will see you guys in the next video, which will be covering MIDI.